questions for reflection. In our first reading, we continue to hear from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. After speaking the word of the Lord to the cities of Judah, calling them to repentance and a return to the Lord, the priests and the false prophets do just the opposite. They turn on the messenger. They cry out, this man deserves to die since he has prophesied against this city. But most importantly, it is the prophet's reaction which we should pay attention to. Jeremiah does not back down. He responded with heroic courage, and I quote, Yahweh himself sent me to prophesy against this temple and this city all the things you have heard. So now amend your behavior and actions. Listen to the voice of Yahweh your God, and Yahweh will relent about the disaster that he has decreed for you. For myself, I am, as you see, in your hands. Do whatever you please, or think right with me. But be sure of this, that if you put me to death, you will be bringing innocent blood on yourselves, on this city, and on its inhabitants, since Yahweh has truly sent me to you to say all this for you to hear." End quote. Jeremiah knew his first loyalty must be to the Lord, and in the face of even a death threat, he stayed faithful. In the rest of the reading, we see the Lord intervened and he was protected. We live in a tumultuous age in both church and state. There are hostile forces who do not want to hear the word of the Lord. If we face hostility, will we respond like Jeremiah? We should pray for the grace to do so. The Psalmist David helps us learn that one of the ways to receive such grace is to regularly praise the Lord. In the midst of what he called the mire, and affliction and pain. He cries out, I will praise God's name in song. I will extol him by thanksgiving. For this will please Yahweh more than ox, than a bullock horned and hoofed. For God listens to the poor. He's never scorned his captive people. Let heaven and earth and seas and all that stirs in them acclaim him. Most of the Psalms of David are prayers and praise. Notice he worshiped and praised the Lord even in the midst of turmoil. Do we? We can. And when we do, a funny thing happens. Sometimes our circumstances change. He delivers us from them. Or sometimes he delivers us through them. But always we grow closer to him. The gospel for today's Holy Mass is the account of the martyrdom of St. John the Baptist. Even more than Jeremiah, his courage should draw us to our knees. Upon hearing that his life was in danger, he could have remained silent. He could have withdrawn for a while until the danger subsided. He could have even persuaded himself that he was being somehow prudent. But instead, he was not like a reed shaken by the wind. He was a man of deep faith and heroic courage, and he stayed faithful to his vocation and his principles to the end. And centuries later, we still recount his heroism, his faith, and his ministry. He was the last prophet of the Old Testament and the first prophet of the New Testament. On June the 24th, the Western Church celebrates the birth of John the Baptizer. On August 29th, we commemorate his death by beheading. Other than the Lord himself and his blessed mother Mary, John is the only saint for whom we celebrate both his birth and his death. In a beautiful excerpt from a sermon of St. Augustine on John the Baptizer, the great Bishop of Hippo calls us to pause and reflect on why. Listen to his words, and I quote, the church observes the birth of John as in some way sacred, and you will not find any other of the great men of old whose birth we celebrate officially. We celebrate John's as we celebrate Christ. This point cannot be passed over in silence. And if I may not perhaps be able to explain it in the way that such an important matter deserves, it is still worth thinking about it a little more deeply and fruitfully than usual." End quote.